Alright guys, welcome to another UK Skate and Crawler video. This is four today. Oh my god. Right. Um waterproofing. Especially if you're running scalers. Um if you haven't really got mega amounts of cash and you don't want to be going out and buying something like a Savox 1256 or anything like that, um then you can still get yourself a half decent servo and waterproof it. It's not that hard to do. Um, this is only Power HD, now it's a 1501, 17 kilogram servo, runs it up to 6 volt. Uh, I've got Castle Creations BEC inside the LR3, um, which is also set to 6 volt. So that needs waterproofing. So I did a video a while back on how to do it, but I had quite a hazy throat, shall we say, and I wasn't too well. Um, so while I'm feeling a little bit better, shall we say, um, I thought I may as well show you how to do it again. And it's just a bit of an update. Um, there's two things I use for waterproofing. There's Corrosion X. In fact, hold on one second. I'll go and get the bottles. By the magic of television. <laughs> uh, and that will be the other stuff. Plastered it. Um, yeah, it's two things I use for waterproofing. There's either Corrosion X. This is, I mainly use this on speed controllers, receivers. Um, well, them two. Uh, and the BEC. Uh, but I would suggest plaster dip in that. Um, but yeah, I use that mainly for doing um, the receiver and your ESC. Reason being, it stops them over. It, they don't overheat. They can't overheat with that because it's only like an oily, oily solution that clings to the metal. So it'll cling to all the solder, solder joints. It'll cling to the board. You know, <coughs> it, it it displaces water. Uh, if you have a look at Squiddle OD's videos uh, or Squiddle's videos, or like I think that's his YouTube name, uh, Squiddle OD. Um, if you have a look at his videos, he, he shows uh, AX10, I think it is, fully submerged underwater, and all he's used is that. Um, for the likes, used, it will work with a servo, but the last thing you want is water getting in a servo, because you get water in it, corrodes the bearing in the top, it'll corrode all the gears, there's no point. Now, if you're going to make it waterproof, you may as well make it proper waterproof. Um, this stuff is the UK plaster dip. It's not brilliant. You're better off getting the US version. And um, the US version comes in a big tub, like a big 250 mil tub, I think it is. Literally dunk it in, pull it back out, waterproof. Um, so I'm gonna use this for now, but it peels off quite easy. So I'll use this for now up until the point where I've got some of the like the proper US stuff, and then I'll dunk it again. But <coughs> yeah, so to waterproof it, what you need to do anyway, take these four screws out. Once you took them out, take the top off, right? In fact, there was one second. I'll just do it now and then I'll show you, it'll be quicker. It was a sec. Right, by the power of the television, four screws undone. So, you've got four screws underneath. You take them four screws out. You don't need to take them all the way out, just take them off or undo them so you can take the top off. And be very careful when you lift the top off because sometimes there's gears inside here, or there's always gears inside here, but sometimes as you lift this off, the gears or the pins will come out with it. And if they do come out with it, you've got to try and figure out which way the gears go back in again. So just be really careful. Give it a gentle wiggle. But it should come off like that. Now, as you can see, here's all your gears. Your bearings in the top. Now, you've got everything there. Now, there doesn't seem to be much in the way of grease on them gears. So I'm going to solve that little problem as well. I don't see why they haven't put much grease on. But, hey-ho. All right, well, yeah, give us one second. I'm just going to chuck a little bit of grease on this, and then once I've done that, I'll show you what you need to do in the top up here. So bear with us a sec. Back again. Right, so what you need to do is the bearing, which will probably be in the top up there, right, is now on there. What you need to do is you get a little tiny O-ring, just like that. Right, hang on. Let's see if I can tilt the camera down so you can see. Just like that. Little tiny o ring, as all as it needs to be. It doesn't need to be nothing massive, just a nice little o ring. So you get the o ring, place it round the top of this servo like that, and what that'll do is it'll stop the water getting in from the top. Now, for it to fully stop the water going in, you need to chuck a bit of grease in as well. So, get me a pot of grease. If I've got, I haven't got much of this left now. <laughs> Right, just get some of that on there. So you've now got the bearing, the little O-ring over the top, 
and then just get some grease and just smudge it on the top doesn't have to be loads but just enough to cover it all so just mash it in you should be left with something that looks like that it's not the prettiest thing in the world but it's all good all right and then if you've got a little bit of grease left just stick a little bit on the gears don't be putting loads on because if you put loads of put loads of grease on it will cause binding issues but if you just stick a little bit in well it's not going to do any harm really so you put that in then once you've done that get your lid and put your lid back on again now when you're doing this just make sure that you get everything lined up straight because there are two little pins in there which need to clip into the lid so that looks good enough for me so um, once you've done that as you can see we've now got an o-ring in the top which will stop the water getting in and we've chucked a bit of grease in as well the screws are falling out man. so once you've done that get your four screws and just chuck the four screws back in again um, when you put them in just put them in so they tightened up now, don't over tighten them if you over tighten them you've got a chance of splitting one of the case halves if you do that it's just going to cause you more stress than anything really so let me just get these chucked in quick and then I will show you what you do with a good old plaster dip next they say you can use corrosion X on the boards inside your servo as well so you can stick it on the potentiometer if you want which is basically the little piece at the top underneath the main gear which tells the servo how far it's turned you stick a little bit on that and then fully submerge the board in corrosion X and it'll do the same job as this but to be honest with you I'd rather have a rubberized coating around it which I know I'm not going to have to worry about then and if you use, if you use plaster dip it just basically create, creates a rubberized coating so nearly done so as you can now see all back together with a little bit of grease around the top and all the gears have now been greased inside so we know everything's right and um, if on your servo you do have little o-rings underneath these screws definitely make sure you don't over tighten them and um, just tighten them down as soon as you feel the neck it's literally just an eighth of a turn that's all you need you don't need to go ridiculous with it um, but next is going to be my good old friend Mr Plaster Dip now <coughs> don't be doing this in your mum's living room I'm doing it in my old it's alright don't do it in your mum's living room don't do it in the kitchen if you're going to do it do it in the garden or the shed or the garage because if you do spill any at least you can't get told off now <coughs> as you can see it's like a, a gloop if you can see that it's the only word I can think of to describe it but so you get your plaster dip, you get your servo and let me reposition the camera seat. So as you can now see, there's the plaster dip, you can get your servo, now you need to tie about halfway, not tie but just go halfway and just put a little loop in it, just so it creates a hanging point, because you're going to have to leave this to dry. So we've now got our hanging point. Get your servo and go dunk. Make sure you fully coat the entire thing with it. Mash it about if you need to. Now, as you can see, I'm well and truly getting it stuck in the stuff. And when you pull it back out, it'll look sort of like that and it'll be dripping for a little while. Now, you can do this once, you can do it twice, you can do it three times, four, however many you need. No, this, personally I'm going to do this twice just to double, doubly make sure I've got a waterproof coating on the servo. So while that's still dripping, as you can see it's already starting to stop dripping now. It's only because it's already starting to form a coating. Um, this will take about 24 hours to dry. So I'm just going to go and get something to hang it on quick. Alright guys, so sorry about that, I've had to. Just hanging on the tripod for a minute. So as you can see, it's now hanging off the tripod, but you can see it's already started to form skin. Now I'm gonna dunk this twice, just because it's the UK plaster dip. It's not as good as the American stuff, if I'm honest. 
But all you need to do is just leave it to dry for a couple of hours now. Um, and then once it's formed the skin, it'll look like it's dry. It probably won't be all together. You're going to need to leave it for around 24 hours to dry. Oh yeah, cheers guys. That's now 100% waterproofed. Um, sorry about all the messing about with all the jump cuts on this video. I wasn't really 100% prepared for it because I was trying to do four in one day. So I think we'll call the limit on three from now on. Um, so yeah, that's now waterproofed. As you can see, the plaster dip has formed like a skin over the servo. So it's now like literally 100% waterproof. There's not going to be any water that's going to get through any of there. Um, one thing you will have to do is trim around the top of your servo just so you can get so you can put your horn back on again. Um, just get an exacto knife, just run it around the edge, and once you've done that, you can pull it off. The water's not going to get in the top for the fact you've got an O-ring in there now anyway. Um, so yeah, you can pull that off, chuck your servo on on, and then away you go. Your servo is now 100% waterproofed. Um, yeah, click the subscribe button for us, please, guys. If you haven't, then and if you have, then thank you very, 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 very much. Um, and yeah, just share this video about because it might help a lot of people out. If you like, use a different way of waterproofing, then just leave us some for or leave us a comment in the description box and let me know how you do it. You know, I might be able to try one of your methods out and see if it works any better. But I know for a fact this does work because I've ran it in Dolby Scalers for a long time. So, yeah, cheers, guys. Uh, so, as I said, whack the subscribe button, click the like button for me, and share the video as well. Cheers, guys. Bye.